jump right in. I'm so happy to have a great guy here. Uh, we're going to be talking with Blake. Um, but I, I guess the big announcement that made the news, and Jack was just talking about it on the news, is that um, the Ocean Explorer spotted the first whale sighting of the season yesterday, two miles north of Molokini, heading towards Ma'alaya Harbor. They're trying to make it easy for you, huh? Yeah, we hope so. <laughs> yeah, it should be an exciting season for us. So. Uh, Aaron Bennett um, saw, yeah. saw the whale. and This is the first whale seen of the season. And at least 12,000 humpback whales are believed to migrate to Hawaii each year, with their rate increasing 7% each year. Over the years, I had many, many opportunities to talk to, uh, to the one and only Greg Kaufman, who has now left us. Um, let me give a little background. You've got an interesting story, Blake. Blake Moore um, came here with his mom to Maui, and she was recruited as a specialist, a special education teacher. That's right. And as a biology student, you applied and was hired for a summer position. How, how many years ago was that? Uh, that was 2001. I actually started in reservations. So I was taking, you know, I was taking yeah, tons, reservations over hundreds, the phone. Hundreds and, and, of calls. Yeah, 2005, <laughs> I came back out working as a biologist with a foundation, which we still do today. All of our staff on board who are naturalists are hired as marine biologists or biologists to help educate the general public about what we're doing on the water and what they can do to help us on the water. And now you manage more than 100 vessel staff. That's a lot of people. Yeah, it takes an army. You know, there's uh, you know a lot of folks there. You know, behind the scenes. You know, Morgan, Chris. Uh, you're also helping with that. But yeah, our department's half the organization, and that's a big part of the drive that Greg started the organization for. That is to educate the general public from a scientific perspective. That's what our department does. The vessel staff department, the cruises. They are designed specifically to get out there and to help people understand the ecosystem that we're on and how they can help protect it. So it really is designed to be the people's whale organization uh, and we want people to get involved and that's how we have you know, so many of our outreach stations and just ways to get involved with the organization other than going on an eco tour with us. Well and because we're just in the throes of remembering hey the first whale's here, whale season's upon us um, you do a, an official Welcome Home the Whales, November 11th. N yeah, November the 10th at 2.30. Oh, it's the 10th. I'm sorry. Yeah, 10th yeah, at 2.30. That'll be out of Lahaina Harbor. And, uh, you know, that's just kind of a ceremonial whale watch that we do. You know, obviously, you know, we saw our first whales yesterday, and these mm -hmm. have been spotted throughout Maui County from the shorelines. And, um, yeah. But our first whale was yesterday, so we, you know you'll start seeing a build up to whale season, mm -hmm. uh, which for us will kick off in November, November the tenth, the official start. Um, so we'll have whale watches out there. A lot of people are surprised by the time of year. They think, oh man, November the ninth, um, yeah, October the ninth. That's really early for whales. It's not at all. It's not. No, there's always um, early yeah, ones that it's, coming. Uh, it's we about were talking the time. about how that happened before the show, and it was interesting because you were saying, of course, the mothers who are in Alaska who are pregnant wait, um, and they they actually come down later, but the mothers that have the babies that were actually conceived and born here on Maui are the first ones to come down, which I wasn't aware of because then at that point you said they were weaning. Their babies are about a year old, and they're ready to wean their babies, That's right. right. Yeah, it's a trickle-in, trickle-out migration, so it might seem like happenstance. The whales just make their way down, but there's actually a science behind it. And, uh, yeah, so the moms that are pregnant currently need the food and the energy that they're going to need to sustain that calf when it's born here in, um, in Maui or in Hawaii. Um, so they're going to hang out around that food as long as possible and then make their way down to Maui or the Hawaiian Islands later. So you'll start seeing those later in the season right now. We're going to start seeing our juveniles and the mothers who are down here to wean those calves are some of the first ones that are going to arrive down here. So uh, yeah, the small whales that you see out there this time of year, they were probably more than likely born here in Hawaii last year. Mm -hmm. And the mom's just making their way back down. They have um, yeah, about a year that, you know, that calf is going to stay with the mom. It's typically until they're about double the size when they're born. Uh, so about 30 feet in length or so, they're going to wean that calf, and it happens right here in Hawaii. So and that's then the, the guys are off on the babies, the yearlings are off on their own, and they form their own groups, and, and mom goes out and 
does her thing again, right? Does her thing again, yeah. Um, now, what do whales eat much here? Or are they doing all they're eating up in Alaska? I mean, how do they survive with food here? Yeah, they're not eating much down here. There's just uh, there's just not really an opportunity for them. So our waters are very clean and clear here in Hawaii. The clarity of our water would indicate that there's not a lot of nutrients in the water for ah. those whales. That so for their food source. The little, the krill, yeah, and yeah, like yeah, the that. krill, you know, the zooplankton, uh -huh. those really small organisms aren't here in Hawaii to oh. sustain. Whales eat really small animals. They're they're huge animals, but yeah, they take eat, a lot of little, take a lot of little <laughs> stuff, little and it's bit. just not here in Hawaii. So they're basically seasonally fasting, if you want to use that wow, term. Wow, a long fast. Uh, and they will lose uh, a good percentage of their body weight when they're here in Hawaii. So you'll start, you know, seeing their backbone, if you will. Uh, so yeah, they're going to lose oh. a lot of weight. They'll come really big and then they're going to lose that weight and go home skinny um, ah, and back amazing. up toward Alaska. Amazing. Well, I also a big congratulations because I know there's a huge grant that was worked very hard on to try to help to um, educate school kids and classes uh, about, because sometimes when the kids get educated, the teachers do too, which That's is really right. important, right? And then we know the kids go home and educate their parents, right? That's right. And it spreads. But it's to educate about how eco-friendly tourism worked about eco-friendly products that you have and about how we can all become aware of how we can become more um, eco-conscious. Right? Yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, the grant that you're referring to was provided by the County of Maui Environmental Protection and Sustainability Division. We're thankful for them for allowing us the opportunity to partner with them for the Plastic Pollution Solutions Program. So teachers, parents, um, this is something to get excited about. All middle school, high school students in Maui County, not just here on the island of Maui, but Lanai and uh, Moloka'i. Um, so, yeah, basically what it is is the program includes a screening of a 22-minute film that's called A Plastic Ocean. And we have built curriculum and activities that are appropriate for these ages and the various subject areas that the teachers would need. They're all tied in to the federal standard, so it makes it really easy and on point for the teachers there. Uh, you know, yeah, and really the goal of this is to familiarize the students with the environmental issues of the plastics in the ocean. But also introduce them to solutions. You know, we're always providing, oh, this is a problem. This is, man, this is something that's really, uh, you know, a big issue for us. It's, it's but, terrible. Yeah, situation giving kids with those, yeah. yeah, you know, giving kids the opportunity to see solutions to that mm -hmm. and then get involved in that as a way to do that. So mm -hmm. if you're a teacher out there teaching middle school, high school students, you can email us at education at pacificwell.org. We have curriculum built for you. We'll come to your school. We have something, you know, for the large groups where we're screening the movie itself. It's a 22 minute movie. Uh, we can also do a smaller group experience with a classroom presentation, a customized workshop, or we can just leave the curriculum with you if you're an educator and let you walk the kids through it at your pace. Um, so it's a really important grant program, uh, and we're excited. Robin Ehrlich is our education director, so she'll be the person to get in touch with. It's really easy, education at pacificwhale.org to get Education at pacificwhale.org. You That's know, it. I mean, that... It is such an important subject, and I've been seeing a lot of entrepreneurial people and, and young people trying to do their best to solve this problem. And what a terrible inheritance that we've left is the fact that there's plastic particles throughout the entire ocean. And of course, there's that huge, huge island of plastic, but now there are people out there trying to actually, uh, uh, you know, attack this problem and try to start removing it. And I know I talked with John Clock. Um, who runs the school, right, the, the store. stores, right? And the st he says that you've got lots of amazing product now, including some that are backpacks made from plastic bottles, right there for sale. And and so there's a lot of amazing things that some of the young people who are seeing this problem are coming up with to try to solve the problem. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, a lot of people don't see the problem with plastic, but it really doesn't ever break down into elements, if you will. It only breaks apart up into smaller pieces. And about a million plastic water bottles are, are bought and used globally every minute, every mm, minute, mm, a million. Mm. So, you know, I mean, we're on a small island. So we started asking ourselves at the foundation, mm -hmm. what do we do? Mm -hmm. You know, we're taking 300,000 people out on the water every year. Wow, so 300,000 300, 300,000. So how do we Whoa. reduce our footprint on the ocean while we're trying to educate? So we're actually the first company on the ocean in the state of Hawaii to be using tree-free cups. Those are going to be coming online on some of our boats. They're already out there. Uh, mm -hmm. We're waiting on more shipments. Uh, these are from the Big Island and Sustainable Island really? Products. 
It's a brand new product. We actually have been waiting for months for them to f finish developing the product. Um, so we tested it on our vessels to make sure it was good for hot and cold cups. It has a bio lining, um, which is actually going to break down in our landfill. So a lot of your paper cups even have a plastic lining on the inside to make sure it doesn't sweat or weep through. We found a product that doesn't do that. So we're excited to introduce this to the industry, get it out there and reduce our footprint. We've been using biocompostable cups for years. The problem with biocompostable yeah, biocompostable compostable cups, cups. <laughs> and containers, and it's we don't have a commercial compost facility no. on the island. And no. I would encourage people to talk to your elected officials. Let's get that going. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an important thing here on the island. But until that happens, we've got to start moving away from these biocompostable products into something that's really tree free and not just going to go into the mm. landfill and look like we're being green. That's uh, a really important part of our organization that's is to walk the walk. Absolutely, and you know, on top of that, which is really important, is these. Um, I was really impressed that John Clock has these um, straws that are made from bamboo. Yeah, bamboo. We've got stainless cool. steel straws, some really yeah. cool stuff that's going on. You these know, are the great gifts sunscreens. for the holidays. You have little containers that hold the straws that people can get. And, and it's, a, it's a wonderful idea. Yeah, I mean, we certainly encourage you to go shop at our ocean stores. A lot of eco-friendly products there. Anything from a you know, really inexpensive bamboo straw all the way up to oil barrels that have been recycled and turned into chairs and coolers. Really? You've got to go in and check out you know, some of the new products. John has done coolers an excellent job in our store. I haven't seen Yeah, those. it looks like a little VW bug. Um, so I think they're in both stores, both Lahaina locations on Front Street, just beside the Paya Fish Market there, um, and also in Ma'alaya at our big ocean store there. So we encourage you to stop by, check out some of the new products. There's a lot of amazing things. Um, you know, the reusable uh, water bottles are in there as well. So uh, definitely stop by, check out, you know, what John's been doing in the store. It's a complete change. If you were in there, you know, two years ago, it's a very different spot for us now. We've really started focusing on you know, some of these green products that we want to introduce to the markets and want people to get on board with. So go check us out, including those new reef safe sunscreens, which are so important. Well, now that we're really getting seriously um, close to whale season, when's you've been doing this a long time because you did reservations and everything. When's the best time to go on a whale watch? Gosh, the best time. Uh, that's actually the most common question that I used to that's get why on I the phone. Because I figured you got to ask uh, that a lot. Yeah, it's still the you know still the most popular question, and the honest truth is. Um, there's not a better time, you know, and I think most people think the mornings I and the reason the for that is because it's really calm. Uh, it is calmer on the ocean in the mornings. So it's easier sometimes before the wind picks up to see that exhalation or the blow sit on the surface. It'll stay there longer. Uh -huh. So it is sometimes a little easier to spot them, uh -huh. but for trained professionals like those that we have on board our vessels, they're going to find whales. As a matter of fact, sometimes the windy areas uh, are really some of the most popular. So uh, just get on a whale watch. We've got brand new whale watches. you say some watches. of the windy areas are the most popular. What do you mean? The whales like to go in the yeah. windy areas? So totally anecdotal, and I don't want to put any, you know, me, Jens and Stephanie are going to kill me if I try to. Uh, but uh, you know, anecdotally, you know, when it's windy and a little bit rough out there, uh, you know, we see a lot of whale activity on those days as well. So, I didn't know that. Yeah, a lot of people like to think that, you know, whales like it calm like we do. I thought they and did, yeah. I think the whales are underwater most times. But, we, you know, and maybe it's windy and you see the surface activity more because it's so windy you can't see the, the logging behavior that takes place. But uh, it's a great, great spot on earth to go watch whales. If you live here in Maui County and you haven't been on one, don't oh. forget, here in Maui County, Pacific Whale Foundation, we're the Kama Aina Company, 40% yeah. uh, off of our cruises. Call us direct. We'll, we want people to get on the water as a, you know, supporting our parent organization, non, you know, the nonprofit Pacific Whale Foundation. We are out there to get people out and to educate them. So we encourage you guys to join us. We have a lot of amazing cruises. Uh, you know, our award-winning, the original Whale Watch and award-winning, uh, you know, here in Maui is our Whale Watches, of course, but we have snorkel trips, we have dolphin watches, we have sunset cruises, and a brand new, Marty Dredd's coming back with us oh, October so the 19th. Oh, I love Marty. Um, yeah. um, we so, actually started that. Marty would do a show here, and I got Marty when he was working with us. I said, Marty, you got a good... So I introduced him to the, that, and he hasn't stopped. He's one of the best. Uh, he is And amazing. the whales love him. The whales do love whales him. We love, love him. him. Yeah. So we encourage you guys to get out. When's, we, that, when's Marty coming back? October the 19th, I believe, uh, is his first day back. And then you're going to see him on Friday nights and Saturday nights oh, uh, you know, throughout peak season. So. And you know what's coming up, Halloween. Halloween is coming up. So, uh, yeah, we'll also be running cruises from Mott Life. You don't want to sit in that traffic. Yep. 
goodness gracious, the traffic, uh, you know, to Lahaina, come get on a boat with us. We'll take you up, drop you, you off on Front Street and bring you back. worry about the people that are out there drinking and all that stuff, right? Because Absolutely. It's, so it's a lot safer if you're on a wheel watch, you know. Absolutely. And we've, uh, yeah, and we've actually, it's actually developed a special a, cruise, and it goes right into Lahaina Harbor. We'll, we'll drop right off in the harbor. And then when do you go back? It's a couple hours later, so we'll give you a ticket to get back on the boat. We'll pick you up. Um, and uh, take you back, or you can, you can stay even, there in Lahaina. You know there's going to be people in costumes on that boat. Oh, including you know our crew. <laughs> yeah, we're going to make our crew <laughs> you know dress gonna, up, of course. You know it's going to be one fun cruise, right? It's going to be a lot of fun, yeah. yeah. So uh, we definitely encourage you guys to get out with us. I mean, you know, it's one of the yeah more popular um, you know, holiday cruises, if you will, for us. People really enjoy dressing up, and, you know, we play some fun Halloween music on the way. Our crew are dressed up. It's a lot of fun. If you're open on Saturday nights and you're looking for a new place to take your date, um, we have a brand new, beautiful, celestial sunset cruise. Oh, do you? Uh, so we go out, watch the sunset, and then we sit out there with, uh, you know, the award-winning astronomer Harriet Witt, oh, who will I tell us Harriet. about the stars. So come out and join oh, us. Oh, I didn't know she was doing that. Harriet every is Saturday fantastic. Night. Harriet's brilliant. Oh, so she's you're amazing. doing a special star cruise with Harriet? Yeah, we do that uh, on Saturday nights. We've been running that cruise for about ten years, but it was uh, only it was one-offs. So new moons, full moons. Uh, now we're doing it weekly, so folks can you know get on board. I had a lot of people asking about and that's wanting out of to go Ma'alaya out. Or Lahaina? It's out of Ma'alaya on our brand new vessel uh, that just got here in February, Ocean Guardian. So come out and check out oh. our new boat. So how many and vessels do you have now? This is seven vessels. So we have oh. our uh, sailboat up in Lahaina. China Harbor uh, that leaves from there, and uh, our power catamarans are you know, leaving out of uh, Ma'alai uh, Ma and Lahaina Harbor, and we have a 40, uh, 38 uh, passenger vessel that'll leave out of Ma'alai as well. So if you want a small group experience, yeah. we have those. If you're still looking for the big boats, we have those, and we have a brand new thing this year. Uh, we're listening to our guest who said, man, I love going out in the, in the 10, you know, 9, 10 o'clock time of day for whale watching, but I don't want to be on a boat that's full. So myself and John Gaskins have worked together to create a cruise that maxes out at 70 people on a 149-passenger vessel. Oh, nice. We have three-hour whale watches that include lunch. So you got to call Pacific oh, nice. Whale Foundation. And the number is? 1-800-WHALE-11 or locally 249-8811. 249-8811. Or if you remember 1-800-WHALE-11, that'll get you there, too. Can I give people a tip about that 249-8811? Sure. Just hit star there you go. <laughs> You're right? Yeah, that'll get you right in. You yeah. don't have to listen to the whole thing. You don't message. have to listen, yeah. <laughs> Just hit one say, or zero, it'll yeah, send you right into right. our reservation. Because otherwise you, you kind of think. But, I mean, there are, you know, a lot of people that are helping people, and it gets busier and busier as the season goes on, with the peak being in February, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. it'll peak between February and March is really when we see the, the largest concentration of whales here in Maui County. Um, in April, it starts to taper off. In November, it's going to build up really into December, January, February. And there's going to be the Run for the Whales happening again this coming That's year. coming up, yeah. So find us online at www.pacificwhale.org and find out all the details to that. It's always a really fun way to get engaged with the organization, support the whales in that respect. And it's a big uh, run. It's a big it run, is. yeah. It's gotten bigger every year. And yeah. uh, you know, so we're anticipating it to be even larger this year than it has in the past. So you want to make sure that you, you know, get the those tickets early. Well, there's a lot of nice things, and I have to say, and again, I, I told John Clock this when he was in, is that, that you have really great quality items, including the T-shirts you give out for the runs. That's right. And, you know, we the people who run like their T-shirts. So. Absolutely. Um, so it's always a nice way. And it's a beautiful one because you go along the water, and you can even, you know, you're, you're – you have a lovely run. Oh, it's one of the route. best runs the in the world, if great. you ask me. I think it's, you know, absolutely amazing. And you and know what? Now it's spread, so people do the runs in other parts of the world on the same day. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So we it's have worldwide. an online, we have an auction that's coming up, you know. So if you, yeah, if you're not in Maui County, if you're headed back home soon, uh, you can still stay engaged with the organization through our online presence there. Uh, yeah, we have the online auction, which is going to be taking place. So we encourage you, if you have donations, 100% of the online auction goes into our Kiki Well Watches. Uh, you know, so every year we shut down our Well Watches uh, in the middle of our most profitable time of day on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we take Maui County school children out on our vessels, 
and we are showing them the whales. Um, that is supported through your efforts. So if you're you know, on an eco tour today, if you've been on one before, that money's going in to help support these kids. Uh, you know, we've also partnered with the Maui Ocean Center this year on their new little dome, you know, mm-hmm. the three dimensional uh, you know, experience. So we encourage you guys to get involved with the organization. There's lots of cool ways to do that. We are you know, shooting for over 3,000 kids uh, is what we would like to bring. We brought about 2,500 kids out on Kiki Whale Watches last year. Cost us about twenty thousand dollars, so we're needing wow. some donations to help sustain this, and we want every child on the boat. It was one of Greg's big things: yeah. is uh, let's shut down whale watches. I want to get kids out when they're at school. Yeah. Well, and, look at uh, you. Your life was changed, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it really is an amazing you were experience. Twenty years old. How I was old were I was twenty years old when I first came here. Yeah, I didn't even know Maui had whales, and now yeah. you know I'm in charge of the organization yeah. side that's running the whale watches. It's uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, I think, for everyone to get out. You never know what kind of experience you're going to have. You never know how that's going to change you. Um, you know, it's pretty interesting. The first whale watch I went on, I actually became a member of the organization uh-huh. and I worked there. Uh, so I really want to encourage you guys. Memberships are an important, critical part of sustaining our organization. And they provide nearly half the funds needed to support our scientific and you get a research. Discount. When you're a member, you get a good discount. Absolutely. But you also get the feeling of being a part of an organization that's mm-hmm. doing a whole lot to protect these whales. Our environment here in Hawaii, we're, you know, we're doing false killer whale studies. We're studying whales in Australia. We're funding whale research in Chile. Uh, we have a whale research station in Ecuador. So it's a larger, you know, it's a much larger organization than just here on Maui. We encourage you guys to get involved, understand what the organization's doing. These memberships are a really big part of what we're doing, so we encourage you guys to get on board with that. The website to find out about all this good stuff? Yeah, we have a couple different websites. If you're looking for the nonprofit Pacific Whale Foundation to get involved with our research and understand what we're doing, go to pacificwhale.org, www.pacificwhale.org. If you're looking for our eco tours, if you want to get on that stargazing cruise, sunset cruise, snorkels, uh, or Marty or Dread. Marty Dread, those whale watches, go to P- uh, packwhale.com. Uh, that'll get you in the right spot. We'd love to have you guys join us out there this year. It's really a wonderful organization. I've been involved for, I don't know, 29 years, ever since um, I first met Greg and did all the things and watched it grow and grow and grow. And it did grow and grow and grow. And by the way, we didn't even mention it, but I'll do throw out there. He was one of the first people to actually use biodiesel. Absolutely. And I remember when that was happening. And Absolutely. First, it was like a big deal, and that was years ago. Yeah, we have, a, yeah we have a meeting scheduled back with them again next week. Uh, actually, at the end of this month, we'll be meeting with uh, the biofuel folks again to you know, talk about coming back on board with a larger presence uh, you know, here in Maui County. So, uh, we, yeah, look forward to other you know, sustainable things that we're doing uh, you know, on board. And you can always find us, Haleakala, I always like to – Mention our Haleakala program, especially for those of you that live here on Maui. It's a really important. We work with the National Park Service to take you up to the – we will pay for the van ride. We will pay for your entrance fee. We will pay for a train biologist to go up to the top of the mountain with you, work to remove invasive species inside the park. I didn't then, know that you do that. Yeah, we've been doing that for about 10 years. It's an amazing program. We work with the – we. we it's, it's a really important part. If you've never been to Haleakala, oh, yeah. it's the, you know, the $15 or $20 to get in. Uh, we want to pay for your way. We want to take you up there, show you your national park here on Maui, and then help to remove these invasive species that affect Malkata Makai is our concept. Uh, you know, so we want to protect our island, not just our ocean. Uh, so it's a really important part of what we do there as well. So I had lots not of outreach. Known about that. That's a fantastic program. Absolutely, yeah. It's and been going which for over site would years. that be on? Where people want to find out about that? Uh, you can go to PacificWell.org or just call us at one eight hundred Well One One or the two four nine eighty eight eleven and ask our trained wonderful reservation customer care staff there they can help you with that as well so if you want to go to haleakala for free we'll take you up uh, it runs every first and third saturday of the month wow. and we're really trying to get our local community to join us on that it's great to have it. visitors with us but we really want our local community involved in our national park that's great to hear about well blake it's been wonderful talking to you i learned i mean i thought i knew about everything about the pacific whale foundation but i learned a lot that i had no idea yeah we always about, encourage so. folks if you want to know more about us come see us yeah. ask for me at the front desk i'll be happy to take you through the organization show you answer any questions wow. that you might have about us we are a social enterprise the boats run as a for-profit that's donating all of its proceeds to the the, the owner 
um, which is the parent company Pacific Whale Foundation owns the boats. Um, so uh, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of questions about that. Sometimes we'd love to answer those questions and help people see where their money is going when they join us on an eco tour. It's a really important, really transparent process for us. Uh, we encourage people to get involved and find out more about that so you feel good about supporting an organization that for 38 years, uh, you know, has been involved in protecting the marine ecosystems here in Hawaii and around the world. Well, congratulations on what, all the great new things you're doing. Yeah, thank you. A good meeting you again. I think I met you. Yeah, before. we've met a good couple times here. It's yeah. nice to join. But yeah, yeah. Nice, well, we'll nice be probably again. having you back in again when we get close to uh, the February time or maybe January when uh, all the other good events happen. That as well. sounds great. Look forward to seeing you all I'll out on the water. See Come you join before, us. Because I'm going to get out there. I, I always make a point of getting out and seeing the whales. You call me. We'll get you out there. I'd I love will. to have you. I absolutely will. Thanks again, thank Cindy. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful talking to you.